Hi, my name is Li Xiong. I'm a professor at Emory University in the United States. Thank you for the opportunity for giving the talk. For today's talk, I would like to introduce trustworthy machine learning with differential privacy and certified robustness and introduce some of our recent work in my lab on this topic. So this conference is about computing and data science. Needless to say, we've witnessed how computing and data science, in particular machine learning and deep learning, has shown great success in a wide uh, range of tasks, ranging from voice recognition systems to self-driving cars to precision medicine and public health recently, such as forecasting and modeling for the COVID-19 pandemic. Essentially, machine learning algorithms works by learning from large amounts of data discover patterns and insights from the data, and then transform them into models, which can be then used to make decisions and predictions automatically for various applications. So here's an application example where an image recognition model is trained on image signs with their associate labels, then used by self-driving cars to automatically recognize road signs. And here's another example where a voice recognition system trained on speech data and then used by voice assistants to recognize commands. One more example where a face recognition model is trained on face data, then used at airport support security control for face recognitions. Now, since all these models are trained based on training data, the bigger the data, the smarter the model. And oftentimes these training data involve our personal or private information, such as our faces or our voice commands, and this leads to the privacy pitfall. There have been several attacks that demonstrated the privacy vulnerability of deep learning models, or in general machine learning models. And given only access to the model, even without access to the training data, an adversary can actually infer the private information from the training data. This includes membership inference attacks that attempts to infer if an image or record belongs to the original training data, or model inversion attacks or feature inference attacks that given a class label, for example, if an attacker knows Peter is in the image training data set, then she can try to reconstruct the data record or features corresponding to Peter, just based on the model. And because the models depend on the training data, it also creates security vulnerabilities besides privacy risks. The training data may be poisoned or tampered with, and then result in corrupted models. Since training data is inherently limited, not covering the entire data universe, so this also creates a limitation that can be exploited by adversaries to craft malicious input during inference time to try to trick the system to misclassify or make wrong decisions. Here's an example. By making minor changes to the stop signs that mimic the graffiti, um, which are undetectable to human eyes or not very noticeable, it can fool the image recognition system into thinking the sign say something completely different, such as a speed limit sign. It can also easily fool a voice recognition model. Here's a command that's recognized as, without the data set, the article is useless. I can try to play this. Without the data set, the article is useless. Now, with slight perturbation that's not recognizable to our ears, if I play it. Without the data set, the article is useless. It sounds very similar. However, it will fool the system to recognize it as okgooglebrowseevil.com. So to combat this, it requires us to build machine learning algorithms that ensures rigorous privacy protection for training data, and also requires us to build robust machine learning algorithms that can resist adversarial example or poison data and still give a correct or stable prediction for manipulated input data or models trained on poison data. So we did some work along these lines um, that applies differential privacy to model training. Differential privacy is a standard privacy framework for training machine learning models or for doing data analysis. It ensures rigorous privacy for the resulting model. We also studied robustness, including both empirical approaches and more theoretical certified robustness approaches. So for today's talk, I will briefly introduce the ideas behind two work. The work, the first one aims to enhance the utility privacy trade-off of machine learning models trained with differential privacy. And the second one aims to ensure certified robustness for quanti quantized neural networks. So to introduce the first work, I'll first give some background on differential privacy. 
Differential privacy has now become a widely used privacy framework for privacy preserving data analysis and machine learning. Essentially, given a randomized mechanism or algorithm, or a machine learning algorithm in our case, it ensures differential privacy ensures that given two data sets that differ in one record, the resulting machine learning model that's trained on these two data sets is indistinguishable. In other words, the adversary by looking at the model cannot infer whether a particular record is in the original training data or not. So this gives privacy guarantee for each record in the data set. Now, formally, it states that the probability of mapping to the same model, S in this case, from the neighboring data sets D and D prime, these two probabilities are bounded by E to the epsilon, which is a small factor. And epsilon is the privacy parameter. The smaller, the better privacy. And the additive delta factor is just a small value that says this bound may fail with a small probability. So differential privacy has been increasingly used by industry and governments to ensure privacy of user data, such as the US Census 2020, Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, these big companies, they're all claiming they are using differential privacy for collecting user data statistics without um, privacy um, disclosure. And they're also using differential privacy for sharing data sets for public uses. Now, when applying differential privacy to the machine learning model training, given a typical stochastic gradient descent training algorithm that's often used for training deep learning algorithms, the most common way to achieve differential privacy is to add perturbation to the gradients during the SGD training process. So that ensures the models are indistinguishable given two different data sets. Now, one of the main challenges of training the differential privacy um, differentially private models is that it will introduce noise and inevitably it will affect the utility or accuracy of the model. So it's important to both understand the theoretical bound of the utility and also design algorithms that can empirically improve the privacy utility trade-off. So in one of our recent works, we observed that there are several gaps in existing differentially private deep learning frameworks in terms of the theoretical utility guarantee and also the algorithms applied not really reflecting the state of art training paradigms, such as stage-wise training with different learning rate for different stages. So typically, the privacy analysis on the privacy preserving algorithms assume constant uh, learning rate. So in this work, we designed and analyzed a stage-wise DPSGD, Differential Private Stochastic Gradient Descent, short for DPSGD. Uh, we designed a stage-wise DPSGD framework with early momentum and showed it has improved utility rates compared to existing work. And importantly, it also showed that it has matching utility compared to the non-private ones under certain conditions. So here's the algorithm. It essentially uses a multi-stage framework in the outer loop, which is the above algorithm. It has k stages. Each stage uses a different learning rate. And then in the bottom algorithm, which is corresponding to each stage, it uses a DP gradient perturbation or differentiated privacy gradient perturbation to perturb the gradient before doing the model updates um, for each iteration. So you can see the algorithm is fairly simple. It just adds a gradient perturbation step into the typical or standard SGD or multi-stage SGD algorithm. And all the tough mathematical work actually are in the privacy and utility analysis, which I will skip here. Um, here are some results. Oops, sorry. If I can draw your attention to the figures on the right-hand side, the blue line is the non-private model as a reference. It's the model without any differential privacy guarantee. And then the few lines next to it is different variants of our approach. The red line and the green line are the basic DPSGD approaches with constant learning rate. So we can see that the stage-wise algorithm provides a big performance gain compared to the standard or baseline DPSGD approaches. On the other hand, we can also see there's still a big gap between the DP algorithms and the non-DP algorithm, the blue line which means there's still a lot of space for our research to improve the utility of the DP or differentially private deep learning algorithms. So that's the privacy preserving machine learning with differential privacy. Now let's look at the adversarial examples and see how we can train an algorithm that has certified robustness against the adversarial examples. 
Recall that adversarial examples are malicious input at inference stage that adds small perturbations or manipulations to the input that are not detectable to human eyes, but can trick the classifier to misclassify. Now, if we want to build an algorithm that's robust against such manipulations or perturbations, what does it mean? Right? Consider an adversarial example. It adds small changes in the input, which results in misclassification. Now, for robustness, that means we want to make sure the small changes in input does not result in big changes or drastic changes. In other words, it should result in only bounded small changes so that the prediction stays stable and still gives correct prediction. Now, what does this remind us? Small changes in input gives small changes in output or indistinguishable changes in output. That's right, differential privacy. Because if we remember, differential privacy, the definition, it actually says the small changes in input results in bounded changes in output, right? So that means, can, can we ask the question, can the DPSGD approach that we just presented, we just discussed, can it actually already provide adversarial robustness? Right? This indistinguishability seems to align well with the robustness we wanted. Now, the answer is no. Right? Why? Because the DPSGD ensures the training process or the training algorithm is differential private, the SGD training algorithm. But what we wanted for the robustness is for the classification process at inference time to be indistinguishable to the small perturbations in an input. Um, so these two things are actually different. So DPSGD ensures training SDP but cannot ensure the classifier um, is indistinguishable. That's why we still need new approaches that would actually create a randomized classifier in an inference stage so that it can ensure the differential privacy or it can actually ensure the robustness. So the existing representative approaches for certified robustness are called pixel DP and recently randomized smoothing. Essentially, these approaches add a noisy layer in the neural network. It can be also at the input layer, which becomes the input perturbation or randomized smoothing. The idea is to have multiple randomized model or input. Each gives a classification output. And then by aggregating these outputs, we can get the expected output, which can ensure certain robustness. And the details are going to be in a proof that actually shows certain mathematical bound that it's certifiably robust within a certain range of perturbation. So in one of our recent works, we looked at quantized neural networks and tried to build certified robustness for such quantized neural networks. The motivation is that many of the resource restricted devices such as cell phones may only support integer arithmetic while the randomized smoothing approach mentioned earlier require floating operations to generate noise. So we proposed a randomized smoothing approach using discrete Gaussian noise. Again, the approach is actually fairly straightforward. It just uses or draws the discrete Gaussian noise for the randomized smoothing. But the details lie in the analysis uh, of the robustness guarantee. Here are some quick results. The takeaway is that the discretized approach, um, which is the blue line, achieves comparable accuracy to the full precision model, which is the yellow line here. And it has much better accuracy than the model that uses continuous noise and then doing the rounding, which is the green line. And if we look at the right-hand side, it's also much faster compared to the floating point methods. So to summarize, it's very important to build privacy-preserving and robust machine learning mod um, models or methods. And there are many open challenges, for example, how to balance the trade-off and exploit the synergy between privacy, efficiency, and robustness. For example, can we use randomized smoothing to achieve both differential privacy and robustness because they actually add some randomness in the input space, right? Can we actually utilize that randomization or perturbation to ensure or to achieve or prove both differential privacy and robustness? and how to connect the theoretical guarantees of differential privacy and certified robustness to the empirical robustness to privacy risks and to these adversarial example attacks. And also how to incorporate other factors such as fairness of the model and explainability of the models. So there are many interesting questions that can be studied. With that, I wanna quickly acknowledge the students in my lab who did all the work, and we're looking for graduate students and postdocs to join us. Thank you.